So, so I'm going to consider an output function of a cop. I'm not going to of a cop Douglas type. I'm not going to like follow strictly the some of the notation which is used in economic text or something because uh, I, I just want to illustrate some of the ideas which we talked about in the previous video with this actual functional form. Now you already know this and um, this this c is a positive constant. I just write c is positive, a is positive. These these are all fixed. L and K are positive, but they are variables. And these are the variables. So it's a function of two variables. Now, what kind of function is this? It's is separable what way? Uh, yeah, it's multiplicatively separable. Okay, so we can use the sort of the ideas which we saw for differentiating multiplicative sets. But even if you don't need, you don't need to know those. I mean, it's just followed. Uh, Oh, this, this C is just a pain to remember. So, but we are I mean, you could just set C as one and simplify. But uh, since I wrote the C, I just did. so what's the partial with respect to L? Well, uh, so it's C A L to the oops L to the A minus one K to B K to the B. I mean, right. F sub K. Is C L to the A mm -hmm. oh, times B. You B. can hold the B out, yeah. yeah. L, L to the A. A. K to the B minus one. What is F sub L K, which is the same as F sub K L? And the general rule, as you remember, is you you want to differentiate do both the differentiations independently, right? So this part you differentiate with respect to L. This part you to K and multiply. So you get C A B. Times L to A minus one, mm -hmm. K to the B minus one. C A A minus one, L to the A minus two, K to the B. Okay, that's good. So you just uh, this part remains unaffected, and this part just gets differentiated. That's, that's how multiplicative separable things work. Okay? Each piece gets differentiated with respect to its. L B C B B minus one L to the A K to the B minus two. Awesome. So so we have all these partials now. Uh, so what can you now say about the signs of these expressions? Well, I assumed A and B are both positive. So I think uh, you can say without much uh, hesitation, and C is positive, that this expression out here is positive for all L and K. L and K are, are we are assuming the, the, for the factory owner. So by the way, this was, if you haven't seen the previous video, this was labor expenditure. And this is capital expenditure. Okay, and, and we're assuming that that the person with positive expenditures in both the areas. Okay, now here the this derivative. What's the what's the sign of this? Well, C and A are positive. L is positive. We are raising a positive number to any power. I mean, A minus one may be positive or negative. We don't care. But the point: this is still positive. This is still positive. So overall, this X is positive. Similarly, this is positive. So what this is saying is that the marginal product of labor is positive for all values of labor and capital. And the marginal product of capital is positive for all values of labor and capital. Okay, good. Now what can you say about whether they substitute or complement each other? What can you say about this expression? Mm -hmm. Well, C, A and B are all positive. Mm -hmm. What about this thing? Yes, they are all positive. They are all positive. In fact, in fact, because it's multiplicatively separable, that's sort of the reason why why these will be why these sort of the signs don't really get changed. Uh, effectively, what what we're saying is that that labor and capital are complementary. Okay, in a Cobb Douglas situation, you are you always have labor and capital are complementary. In a multiplicative separable situation, each one is multiplying on the other, right? And because the coefficients itself are positive, that's this complementary. That's the first interesting. Well, the second, if you assume, if you say the marginal product is positive, it's interesting, but that's sort of predictable. This is this is a special feature of this kind of function. Right? 
which means if you want to model a situation where they are not complementary, you probably shouldn't take a cop calculus production function. Okay. Uh, now, what about the this one? What about the mixed? Uh, what about the not mixed? This is the mixed one. What about the second order pure partial? What can you say of this? If a is uh, less than one, then it's negative. Mm -hmm. Then that means you have decreasing returns to labor. Mm -hmm. If a is greater than one, you have increasing returns to labor. And if you have if a is equal to one, you actually have constant returns to labor. Right? It will just be linear in labor. Mm -hmm. and labor. So. This is really the fact that, like, if you make the graph of x to the n, it's concave up if n is greater than 1, it's straight if n is uh, equal to 1, and it's concave down if n is less than 1. So, it's the same thing. Now, you got that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, what about the capital thing? Well, same story. Instead of A, you have B. Right? B instead of A. So, the same story. Okay, now what about... So, so, so you see that, that in order to get increasing returns on labor, you, you really need the coefficient, the exponent on labor to be greater than 1. So, if you want to get increasing returns on capital, you want the exponent on capital to be greater than 1. However, what happens if you consider combined returns? So, what do mean by combined return? Well, suppose suppose my total ex so expenditure is e is L plus K. Okay? And now I fix L as, as a fixed fraction of E and K as the remaining. So, so, so as, as the factory owner, I've decided that I'm always going to spend on labor and capital in this ratio, x is to 1 minus x. Now, in that case, what's the output as a function of e? What's it? Uh, so x c times x to the a x e to the a uh -huh. 1, one minus, minus x, x e to the a. So, that becomes c x to the a by 1 minus x to the b mm -hmm. by e to the x plus b. a plus. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, that's the output function. Now, what do we mean, what do we see then? We see that the output function is, now if I ask you, how does the output function, now what is, what is the combined returns output label? That really depends on a plus b. Okay, so if, a plus b is greater than 1, what would that mean? What do you think that would mean if a plus b is greater than 1? It means... Uh, if you keep x fixed, if you keep proportion fixed, you'll have... Yeah, you positive combined return. Uh, well, increasing returns, increasing returns on... Uh, sort of increasing returns on expenditure overall. Right? I mean, you could see this explicitly by taking mm -hmm. the second derivative. Right, this is this all this is constant, and this you take this in on total expenditure. A plus B equal to one, you have constant returns on total expenditure. And in fact, in like the real world Cobb Douglas thing, you people usually assume A plus B is one. Uh, at the margin, because at the margin, you do expect that that you do get constant returns on total. Like, otherwise, you just keep spending more. Right? So there's there's some sort of sense in which this is the this is sort of the case which should be the realistic case, the middle one. But since we are just doing it totally theoretically, well, the realistic case should be a minus uh, a plus b is uh, less than one, right? You cannot just keep investing and investing to the same scale and then... Well, why not? Mm, not sure. I mean, you just don't see like Mac companies. They don't expand to infinity. Yeah, I mean, well, the way the way they usually try to do Cobb Douglas, I guess they, they, they do it generally for those kind of factories which can grow to infinite size, not, not very real work. 
But when they do those things, they usually do do the A plus B. So they sort of put that as part of the definition in in some situations. And so that's why I said this Cobb Douglas step. I'm not assuming this. But the point is that you see that now this condition, increasing returns on total expenditure, is a lot easier to achieve than increasing returns on either of them individually, right? So can you put give some examples of values of A and B where you don't have decreasing returns individually but increasing returns combined? Like A and B are such that individually you have decreasing returns, mm -hmm. but to, but combined you have increasing returns. Okay, so anything that's really 0.7 plus 0.5. Yeah, so you can have A as 0.7 and B as 0.5. You'd have individually you'd have in, in, uh, decreasing returns, and and together you'd have increasing returns. Okay. Uh, so, so, and that may make sense. That's that's sort of the law of diminishing. That that you cannot you you have to increase all your all your factors of production. You cannot just keep increasing one factor of production and expect increase. If you increase all of them together, then the general expectation is, and that's why I said the a plus b equal to one is sort of a general expectation. If you your overall output should somehow be proportional to your overall expenditure. In, in in reasonable sized real world situations. Mm -hmm. yeah.